In this instructional video, we'll go through ways of importing into Pro Tools. Okay, let's get started. Notice here I have a Pro Tools session open, and it's kind of resized, somewhat awkward, and I wouldn't usually resize it this way, but I want to show you different ways of importing into Pro Tools. Let's start off by using the File menu, or the quick key would be Shift, Command, and I. File, Import, Audio. Shift Command I. In here, let's navigate back to a folder that I've already created under my home folder inside my music folder. And I recommend you do this as well. Create a folder called Sounds and Samples. Again, your home music folder, Sounds and Samples. And then I've created a folder called Avid Materials. These are some really great materials that I want you to have access to, and you already do. They're on your installation disk. In the event you don't have your original installation disk, navigate back to your Avid account, go to your login, activate your login information, and under View My Product Details, Locate where your current version of Pro Tools is, like you can see here. Here's my version 10. Go to your download section, and there you have it. All of these files here are all of the files that you're seeing that I have created inside this folder, Avid Materials. Inside Avid Materials, we have all sorts of different genres that give us tempo information as well as key information that will be very useful for final project. If we go and find one of these files, we'll go and find drums, and we'll find beats, and I can audition any one of these files. Notice here, whenever I have a single file selected, it gives me information about the file, file type, its bit depth, its sample rate, number of channels, the size of the file, I can audition the file from this location. And if it was a long file, you could then scroll through the file as well. Now here's some important options we have here in the center here. We have the option of adding or of copying. You really want to get in the habit of copying, and here's why. If we choose add, remember that all DAWs are pointer based, and it will actually leave the original file in its original location. That could actually paint us into a corner later on because it doesn't actually add it to our audio files folder. That's why you want to get in the habit of choosing copy. This will create a second copy of that file and leave the original in its original location. Again, back to the sounds and samples folder, but then copy this to my audio files folder of my current session. We'll go ahead and we'll choose done. It's asking me what destination folder it wants to be saved back to, and it automatically defaults back to your correct audio files folder. Choose open. Now you're presented with an option. You can either create a new track, or you could send it to the clips list. You may see regions list if you're on versions 9 or under, but it's understandably the same exact features. Clips and regions bin work exactly the same. It's just nomenclature that's changed. So clips bin and region bin mean the same thing. We could choose new track, and this is actually a best option, because it'll do several things for us. It'll create the track, it'll name the track based off the file, and it'll put the file within the track itself. And you can see there's our file. You can zoom in on it, and there's a nice new imported file. So that was using the file menu. You also could drag and drop files. For instance, if I go back and find that folder that I just showed you, We'll go back into my music folder, sounds and samples, avid materials. We'll try a different genre this time. How about some hip hop? And again, we'll go down and find some percussion. And what about some congos? Cool. I can then choose any files and just drag and drop. This could also be for my desktop. I can drag and drop into my clip spin, into an available space, which is probably what I'll do here, or even over to my track spin. If I drop into an available space, again, it'll create the track and place it within the track. I could have dropped over into my tracks show hide menu, and I also could have put it with just within the clips menu, 
but then it didn't create the track, it just simply added it to my audio files folder. Now you can also do the same thing just from your desktop. So different ways of dragging and dropping inside of Pro Tools. Now there's also another way you can import inside of Pro Tools, and that is by using your workspace browser. Let me open up Pro Tools all the way so you can see both the edit and the mix window. And to access your workspace browser, the quick key would be option semicolon. But you can also just navigate to your Windows menu and select workspace browser. Workspace browser basically gives you a way of navigating back through your computer but by using Pro Tools and using its own browser menu. Notice you can go into your Mac drive. I can go to my users. There is me. I can go to my music folder. There's my sounds and samples. Uh, looks like I double clicked it more than once. Let's go back again. There's my music folder. Let's scroll down to sounds and samples. And here again we have the Avid materials. And this time why not pick something from our world menu. And again I'll just choose some drums. How about reggae? And again I can drag and drop to the clips, to an available track, or to the show hide menu. Let's drag into a, tr a track itself. Now another method of importing. We can actually import what's called session data or entire uh, portions of other sessions. We'll do this by going to the file menu, import, choose session data and here's where it's slightly different. In this case I'll actually have to point it back to a Pro Tools session file. So let's go back into my music folder. I've already created a folder that I save all my Pro Tools sessions back to. It's under music, Pro Tools. And let's go find any one of these sessions. Oh I don't know. Avid's demo session is pretty cool. And if we open up the actual session file instead of going back to an audio file, we can import a bunch of different information that you normally can't import. In other words, the entire track, as well as the plugins, the way it's edited, the pan positions, will all be imported. Let's go find their vocal track. Let's see, I see some background vocals. Here's the lead vocal. Let's go ahead and import this to a new track. And you'll see that after this imports, we'll have the plugin information as well as any other editing information that happened on that track. So we've gone over multiple ways of importing into Pro Tools. The first method that we used was the file menu import. The second was to drag and drop. The third was we imported from the workspace browser. And then the fourth was we used import session data. Hang tight, we've got a lot more Pro Tools information to show you. Stay tuned.